welcome back. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a bug that was recently reported that I actually discovered back in November and started to fix and then just a whole bunch of different things came up and I never fully got around to fixing. So there's a variant of chess, uh, uh, Lee chess, well I'm sorry there's a variant that's been known for centuries called Lord Dunsany's chess where white gets a whole bunch of pawns on the bottom half of the board, black gets uh, the standard army. Um, it, the formation's a bit different, white doesn't quite get this many pawns, but the idea is that uh, it's kind of like Space Invaders, that if one player can take all the pawns, that decides the game. I'll let me adjust the board geometry for this new layout here. There we go. See so yeah, if the army can capture all the pawns, the army wins, Otherwise, the pawns, the horde, can win by checkmate. Um, if this fun little thing happened, timeout, one half, one half. Black ran out of time. The server declared this a draw. Now, it turns out I'd noticed this and several other things um, back in November and had started to develop a solution to address this particular issue. And then it dawned on me just how intensely complex this particular problem is of a single piece or pawn checkmating against an army. Um, so by FIDE rules and the rule that Lee Chess chooses to adopt, if a checkmate can be constructed or if the player can win, this should be counted as a win and not as a draw when the opponent uh, has their time expire or elapse. And while there are many positions, like a single pawn versus a single king, where the single pawn just by itself cannot win, if the king is accompanied by the correct set of pieces, then the single pawn can either promote, well, yeah, promote to a queen or to a knight and deliver a mate. Um, also, if the pawn has already promoted, that's a whole other can of worms. Um, and so... In response to noticing things like this, uh, I checked out the Scala Chess source code. Actually, let me go over here to GitHub and search for Scala Chess. This is the chess rule set as a uh, that a Lee Chess does apply. Um, chess API written in Scala, immutable, and free of side effects. Immutable meaning that once something is constructed, any of the objects in this library have been constructed, the attributes of that particular object do not change. Um, so you can't, for example, have a chessboard and then have um, a piece mutate on it. You'd have to like remove the piece and add a different piece to the board or something of that sort. There are some exceptions, I believe, to the mutability rule, but I could be mistaken on that. I just haven't encountered any yet, but maybe there are some. Um, so the Scala Chess library defines all the rules for chess, or for all the variants as well. Um, and so I had started developing this branch I called a Horde Fortress. In fact, I fixed an ECO code, the Baltic Defense. Um, which uh, my patch has been accepted into the repository. Excellent, so I don't need that branch anymore. So if we list the branches I have, uh, I have Horde Fortress and I have Master. And so I have currently checked out Horde Fortress. Uh, if we want to take a look at what I've changed, it's a lot of changes. But if we want to know what I've been changing, you could go to GitHub and get this log, or you could just type in the console. Um, here's what I've checked in. Add unit test for uh, the simple fortress versus the king and the pawns. The king can win against any number of pieces, even against minor pieces. This is a pretty egregious bug. Um, so if the side promotes to... Uh, I forget. There's some rules by which the king sometimes doesn't get the victory. So I added the unit test. Um, and then I fixed the code to um, satisfy the conditions of the unit test. And then I added a test for a simple fortress, uh, added a test for other fortresses, 
And then I added this rule, the horde can win in many positions, even when the horde has only a single piece. Um, actually, it's probably best we go to my branch or my fork of this. So let's go over to... I already have this... Pardon me. I already have this fork. Uh, I don't know why I have so many branches here, because I'm not developing all these, but locally this is the one I've been working on. Here's the commit history. Unfortunately, there's no way to go forward through the commit history. There, you can only go back and see the ancestry of a change. So we're going to be going back and forth between the list a whole bunch of times. But, okay, so must recognize that... Um, maybe I changed the verbiage on some of these things. Um, for white with a pawn remaining... Uh, what did I change here? I don't remember. I'd have to pull up each of these to find out what exactly I was trying to fix. Um, but I think I was trying to test what happens if the fortress is either color. Um, so let's just load up this load this position. Uh, so let's go over to analysis board and take a look at the horde chess analysis board and this is the position I was trying to test for saying that uh, what was it add unit test for the horde simple fortress versus king and pawns so this is a test position the idea is that black I'm sorry if whites how do I read this this is a fortress, obviously. Um, but what was I trying to read about this? The success condition here uh, is that white has insufficient winning material. So, not that any ruling should take place in this particular position. Um, but that white has insufficient winning material if black's time elapses. So, for all of black's moves here, like, this is a draw, right? All these pawns are barricaded. That's a draw. That's a draw. This is a draw. This is a draw. And this is a draw. So I added a unit test saying that all these positions are considered drawn. Obviously, um, or I shouldn't say obviously, but the code as it currently stood failed the test. Um, must recognize insufficient material with the horde with only a single pawn remaining. Okay. I'm a bit confused as to why... Oh, I thought there were many more pieces in this position. There's a lot of symbols here, but most of them... Most of these are numbers. Okay, so... The horde cannot win this, no matter what piece the pawn promotes to. Um, black cannot manage to self-mate against uh, the horde, so that's counting as a draw. What else? Uh, must recognize insufficient, with only one queen remaining, same deal. Two minor pieces remaining, so this is considered a draw. I think many of these positions were already here. Um, and these are pretty esoteric, because nobody's going to promote their pawns to, like, a knight and a bishop. But you could. Um, but yeah, that's a draw. Uh, three minor pieces. Let's see. What three minor pieces are we talking about? I think it's any three minors against a bear king. Uh, or even three minors against a queen and a king. There's, there's no way to checkmate here, apparently. Do I believe this? I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, so... Hmm, I'm not sure I'm convinced that this is a draw. The more I think about it. Although, I don't think I added this test, but... Um, let me just see, is there actually no way to checkmate here? It seems very difficult, but... Impossible seems unlikely. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, there is no mate here. Because the queen, even if you were to capture the queen, the two bishops and knight can only control three squares at a time. 
Um, hang on. So, wait. What if I do this? That's mate. Is that test still present? Three minor pieces can mate all by themselves. Um, not that a horde would ever promote to this sort of thing, but I didn't add this. Yeah, this test is incorrect. Uh, okay, so in a bishop versus a king endgame, the king can win. Uh, so I just cleaned up some of the text surrounding those tests. Um, Alright, king can win against any number of pieces, even two minor pieces. There was a bug there that ruled that in a, as a draw for either player uh, when either player expired on time. If the horde runs out of time, the king can always mate or win. And a test for the horde, simple fortress versus the king of the pawns. What did I fix here? I don't remember. Um, must auto draw and simple fortress. Oh, an auto draw for either color to move in that position, not just for um, the king to move. All right. Add a test for other horde simple fortresses. This is again, I think, just editing the tests, right? Or did I actually? Well, I fixed the word horde to spell it the way that we spell it. Um, the way the variant is spelled, but uh, I don't recall exactly what I changed. I, know, I fixed some comments or something. Uh, renamed a function from king threatened to peace threatened so I could use it in some other context. Um, but let's see. Uh, must auto draw in simple fortress. Uh, king seven, pawn seven, etc. Oh, this is the test I added. Must auto draw if the horde is stalemated and only the king can move. This is a clever test that I added. So, if the horde itself has no legal moves, um, regardless how many pieces it has, if all of them... Uh, we're looking at this from Black's point of view, and that's why this is confusing. Here's the position from White's point of view where white's promoted to a queen, a queen, a knight and knight, bishops, and two rooks, and somehow has quite a few pawns remaining. And um, so I forget what was my rule here. If only the king can move and uh, the horde is stalemated, why do I why is it important that only the king can move I don't remember regardless um, this is a more common possibility than the horde uh, being out of moves um, and the opponent being able to move quite a few pieces this is much more common and easier to test for although if you were to add more pieces to the black army um, Probably this would still remain drawn unless Black were able to capture one of the pieces that's holding back the horde. Or if Black were able to move like one of these pawns out of the way such that the horde could move again. Um, so and then the last thing I added was uh, the horde can win in many positions where um, it has only a single piece. However, uh, I added a to-do here because there was something I couldn't quite get working. But also, um, uh, what was it, SBT compile? No, SBT is not locally declared. Um, there's still something it didn't compile. This morning I managed to set up my compilation environment. This is the Scala build tool, formerly the simple build tool. and. Um, this morning I had to reinstall uh, Java on my machine, so I installed OpenJDK 11. Turns out that didn't quite work because there's a bug with Ubuntu 16.04, with certificates, with um, the latest OpenJDKs. This will be fixed in Ubuntu, I'm sorry, 18.04. This will be fixed in Ubuntu 18.10, or so I hear. However, 
I'm not going to wait like six months or something to get that fixed. So I downgraded to OpenJDK 8 and then reinstalled my certificates. And then after doing that, I had to get the uh, SBT simple uh, scale build tool PPA in order to get SBT version 1.1.6, which this project depends upon. And once I gotten that installed, um, well, then I had some performance issues with other things on my machine because uh, I'd been trying to disable some of the other things I'd recently installed. Like, um, well, some of you who saw the live stream saw me working with Sonar Cube, um, which had quite a few dependencies, of uh, which I've now disabled those because I was getting all kinds of performance issues with like Elasticsearch re-indexing. So I disabled Elasticsearch, this broke Sonar Cube, so I disabled Sonar Cube, I had to disable, well I went ahead and disabled Postgres while I was at it. Um, There's a lot of things I disabled this morning, so I got this environment set up again is the point. And now that the environment's established, we I fixed one of my compile errors this morning. However, we still see, and SBT is supposed to have a way that you can have it continually running in the background and you can edit files in an editor and it'll report these things right away as opposed to you uh, invoking it like this. Uh, this is the poor man's way of getting it invoked for those who haven't figured out how to set up uh, the editor with the SBT and running in the background. Those being me, um, but that's okay. I assume it would probably be easier if I were using an IDE, but again, my development is done in a Linux box, and I'm streaming on a Windows box, and this is an SSH tunnel. So, what can you do? But, yeah, what we have here is a bug here, because not in is a SQL construct. It's not a Scala construct. So, I've got to figure out what's going on in this file. Uh, we're going to take a look at this, uh, the horde variant. These were all these special rules I was talking about, but, um, we're going to also find that test that I was just talking about here, the one that I said was incorrect. Um, do I have a test directory? No. Okay, uh, git log, git diff master might point out what files I've been editing. Insufficient material, hoard, um, let's see, this is the scale of variant. This is all under a source, oh, source main and source test. And source test contains uh, the um, hoard variant test which has got a bug. Uh, the reason I couldn't find this is because it doesn't have the word 3 in it. It's got the number 3 in it. And there's three minor pieces left. So, um, yeah, this particular thing is not a draw. Uh, as we saw, well, where was it? Yeah, this one we saw that was able to checkmate a king with two bishops and a knight. I'll demonstrate it again for those who missed it earlier. Um, it was a bit counterintuitive, but I was able to get there. Um, so yeah, this is checkmate. So there's a bug in the tests itself. And I don't think I introduced this particular test, but I need to fix it anyway. So question, um, what combinations of three pieces can checkmate a king bit? Because evidently this combination can. Are there any combinations which cannot? So let's see. Um, yeah, if I'm just going to try, let's go into board setup mode. Here's the board editor. Ew. I wish I could enlarge that. Well, this is disgusting. Um, is there no way? Well, okay, fine. We're going to clear the board anyway, so it's not going to be a big problem. So let's put a king in each corner and figure out 
um, what works and what doesn't. So obviously three bishops can mate if the bishops are not on the same color. Uh, three knights can mate. I've seen this before. Um, yes, three knights can mate. Uh, two bishops and a knight can mate. And what else is there to consider? I wonder. Let's see. All these notifications I've got are a little distracting, but that's okay. Uh, one second. All right, so yeah, we'll dismiss that for now. Um, so two bishops and a knight, three bishops, three knights. How about two knights and a bishop? Can they do that? Two knights and a bishop can, in fact, mate. Um, have I missed any combination here? These are all checkmate, right? So the only combination which cannot checkmate would be three bishops that are on the same color. Otherwise, three pieces is a mate. So... That's pretty funny. As for why there's four kings on the board, your guess is as good as mine. But, um... Yeah... Oh, I'm sorry, must not be insufficient mating material. So this test was correct after all. Three minor pieces counts as a mate. Must not be insufficient with two minor pieces remaining. So uh, all that testing was, well, it, this established the point, which was that I couldn't read, but if I had read that correctly, uh, two minor pieces can mate, but can they only mate if the opponent has the queen? I don't think they can mate unaided, but if there is a queen, where's the mate here, I wonder? It's been too long since I looked at this. Um... Boxing the king into the corner seems difficult. It says must not be insufficient mating material for the king. Oh. Yeah, no. This is a different statement. That the king can still win this. Um, but the minor pieces cannot. Must recognize insufficient mating material for the horde in that same position, other color to move. So, okay, this is... White cannot win this. Black can win this by capturing all the pieces. However unlikely that may be, in a time scramble, anything could happen, right? So, okay, the test is itself correct. So I can go back to coding now. Um, so let's go back to what we were looking at here, where um, I would started... I'm trying to write something that satisfies all the tests, and I am satisfied that all the tests are themselves uh, written correctly. Um, my previous fixes have been to this function here, which is used in a variety of contexts, insufficient winning material. Um, to the extent that there can be insufficient winning material, this function defines that. Um, there are many positions where Having enough material is still not as enough to establish a win. There are many positions where it's surprising that there is a win, but it's there nonetheless. Um, let's see, so here we are. If the horde has a single piece remaining, then check all these things. Else, if the horde's pieces are all bishops and they're all in the same color, do some magic to figure out if the uh, horde itself has winning chances. Else, if the horde has exactly two pieces, and um, the army uh, has one queen or one piece or fewer that's not a queen. Um, under that condition. 
army has um, nothing. I'm sorry, if all the army's pieces left are kings and queen, or king and multiple queens, or one queen or no queens. Uh, or if uh, the horde's pieces are all minor pieces, that's considered a draw. Again, it doesn't really matter how this is coded as long as it satisfies all the tests and as long as it's performant. So you'll see a lot of very confusing things in this code. Um, otherwise, if the um, not king pieces map by role um, is equal to bishop and all the bishops are on the same color, then this is a draw. Um, regardless of whether the bishops are themselves the same color, if all the bishops are occupy the same color square, that's considered a draw. Um, so I added a to-do here. Uh, army pawns, which promote uh, the wrong color square. Uh, yeah, there are some pos uh, positions where... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, to do army pawns which promote on the wrong color square. Assuming there's no checkmate prior to the promotion. Right, so there are some positions where a checkmate cannot be established. Um, how does this go? Oh. Yeah, there's some corner cases where, like, the horde has only a single pawn remaining. And that pawn may or may not be able to checkmate en route to its promotion square. Um, and even if it does promote, the only way by which it can promote is by capturing an opposing piece, which gets rid of the piece that could be used to cut off the escape square for the king. So there's a lot of positions where a lot of really funky things happen that ensure that a checkmate cannot occur. Um, all right, so this particular rule, if the horde consists only of bishops, uh, oh, army pawns are the non-horde pawns. All right, so wait. If the pieces that are not the king um, consist only of bishops and um, the uh, <laughs> and there's at most one army bishop on the opposite color square of the hordes bishops then um, that's considered a draw. And by that I mean, let's go to board setup mode again. So, say we got a king, and we got a bishop, and the horde has, in the most ridiculous manner, decided that they want to promote everything to a bishop. Doesn't really matter how many bishops there are, but, um, there's only one bishop on a dark square. In fact, you could add all these bishops on light squares if you wanted to. There'd still no, be no checkmate here. Um, so there's only a checkmate if there's multiple uh, bishops that are on dark squares, because then that introduces the possibility of the bishop landing here and uh, the king getting mated. But if they're all on light squares, this cannot be mate unless you have something like this. Um, now it's possible the pawn might be on a light square, right? Um, and then things get complicated. In this case, there's no mate because uh, the promotion square is down here. Well, I'm sorry, no, then this promotes to a bishop and goes back. But if you put the pawn like on the B file, um, 
then yeah, the pawn could actually capture the bishop and then promote to a dark square bishop and then go back here. And that would be considered a self-mate, right? So what's not listed here is say uh, the horde has only a single bishop remaining and the pawn's down here. Um, so if the pawn promotes to anything other than a bishop and that other piece ends up back here, that's not a mate because that piece could interpose against a bishop check. It's only if it can under promote to a bishop and the under promoted bishop can trap the king that that would be considered uh, a loss for black on time. Or if it could capture and then promote to a bishop and then uh, the horde has another bishop on that same color ready to deliver the mate. That would also count. Um, I wonder, you could get funny positions like this, right? Um, well, okay, so here's a mate. Let's say the pawn's up a square. The pawn could promote Okay, yeah, if you have bishops on both color squares, then as long as the pawn's not blockaded, uh, this is fine. Is there a circumstance where um, the army has no choice but to capture? Like, is there a stalemate something or other here somewhere? I wonder. Oh, hang on. Um, so if we put the bishop here... Black to move. Black has to capture. So this is something I've got to check for, believe it or not. Um, so black to play. So that puts the B down here. So if uh, the horde has only bishops remaining and the bishops are in opposite color squares and such, this would normally be a win except in the case where uh, the army has to capture the bishop and the forced capture is in such a way that after the move there's no way for the horde to checkmate. This is more complicated than anything we had in a normal chess rule set where we're able to short circuit evaluate in almost every condition. This could realistically crop up um, <laughs> I say, though, what kind of dumb dumb would promote to two bishops, but it could happen. So, I want to augment my tests, believe it or not. Um, we're going to add one more test here. Um, mm -mm, must auto draw in Simple Pawn Fortress. In fact, this would be an auto draw condition. Uh, must auto draw if Horde is stalemated and only King can move. Um, must not auto draw in bishop versus king endgame because the king can win. So line 99 through 106, we're going to grab these eight lines here. Uh, we're going to grab these ten lines here, like I was saying. Must auto draw if army must capture... Um, Reducing a horde. Well, no, that's not an auto draw. Uh, must. What's the word for not detecting insufficient material? Must not be insufficient material. Um, for horde. Um, uh, gosh. For horde, oh, I'm sorry. This must be insufficient. So must recognize insufficient material. Um, for horde, about to lose a, uh, about to have insufficient material. This is, oops, I tried to just get rid of the period at the end here. 
how often do we have like period quote? Um, yeah, now these are commands. These are not sentences, so these shouldn't have periods. Um, so must recognize insufficient winning material for a horde about to uh, when army is forced to capture um, oh dear this gets really complicated there's quite a few positions where this is actually the case um, the most obvious well I'm sorry let's add this in because this is not so obvious good god um, okay so insufficient mat winning material based on the game situation uh, wait do I not specify the color that's kinda weird so this is one position where the capture is forced. There are others. Uh, like if I just put... In fact, we don't even need the second bishop, right? Uh, instead of bb5 here, I could just say seven or king b6. And yeah, this will more than suffice. Although King BB5 is pretty cool too, um, but this is more easily established this way. Wait, no, the, the capture is not forced. What am I talking about? Yeah, King Bishop Bishop 5, the capture is forced. Here it isn't because um, the king could just escape. But. Uh, if you were to put down another pawn, I mean, why would you? It doesn't even matter here, because, like, without the second bishop, this doesn't even matter. Because the bishop can't checkmate by itself anyway. But with two bishops, a uh, capture's forced here. Um, yeah, you really need to do, do need to read ahead of move here, don't you? That's a big problem. Um... Now there are more challenging positions where technically no win exists. Uh, jeez, oh, this is like impossible, isn't it? It's slowly dawning on me just what a mess this is. Because, well, okay, like. You start adding more and more pawns and bishops and stuff onto the board and suddenly captures aren't as forced as they used to be um, but you can come up with some pretty funky positions where uh, a piece is trapped and um, there's still no checkmate here Although I guess white still has the pawn. Can white win this? Can white even win this? I guess if the bishop captures on a2, there might be a win here. Um, but then you could come up with nonsense like this, too. Which is not too hard to devise. Uh, arguably, this could still be lost if black manages to promote. Um, but if you do something like this, this could still be lost because the king can escape and capture some of the pieces. And after having captured some of the pieces, um, black under promotes and gets mated by surrounding his own king. So this is uh, losable. But if I just like chuck all this stuff off the board, um, 
black can capture and then leave a piece hanging on an under promotion square. So that's also theoretically losable. Um, there are positions which aren't uh, which are not stalemate but also aren't losable. Um, you have to try harder, I guess. I guess it's not too easy to construct these, but um, if I could trap the king in somehow. Here we go. Here's the king being trapped. And then if I could give uh, army a bishop back here. And I'm not saying it's possible to reach the position, but this sort of thing um, could be considered a draw, despite the lack of captures. But I guess usually the presence or possibility of a capture indicates um, that stuff could happen. You wanted to ask something to me. I think I've disabled whispers, but um, if I haven't, feel free to give it a try, but I think it disabled that. Only because I just didn't see the point of it. I do have a Discord, and like, well, I don't know if that makes things any easier, but I guess Discord by enable by default does enable private communications. But yeah, if I haven't uh, disabled whispers, feel free to go ahead and I'll see it. But if I have, then I don't know how to re-enable it. Um, so this is all me going on one big digression here about something that's very unlikely. Uh, where is... Um, I should probably work on some of the more simple cases first. Oh, you put some of your private info and there's a guy bugging you. Okay. Um, I'm curious like how I can be of help for that sort of thing. Uh, I mean, people bug me all the time. <laughs> um, whoops. That's funny, I grabbed 10 lines of code that I didn't need to grab. Um, oh, you blocked him. Okay. Yeah, on LeechS, I just disabled private communications. Um, so people, at least on the LeechS platform, aren't like begging me to get their accounts unbanned and things like that. Um, People do still find ways to private message me anyway, but um, there's only so much I can do about that, I guess. Um, I did see somebody post a question in the Q&A the other day about um, following up with like German authorities or something, and it was just way over my head. I didn't understand like what Germany had to do with any of it. Okay, change your sessage, or set, setting so friends can message you. That's good. Um, oh, let me run the test. But also, uh, SVT test. We'll find out that that doesn't really work because, well, um, I have code that doesn't compile still. Um, so you've changed your settings so only friends can message you and leech us is, you love it because you've made some awesome friends here yeah right right there's always some give and some take I still need to figure this thing out how is it that I'm going to do this probably the more scala idiom for this sort of thing is are we bishops Filter. Um, we're searching for bishops whose color 
is not the same color. I don't even think I have this rule specified correctly. If all the pieces other than the king are bishops, and if the army's bishops dot size is less than two, um, really I should just count up the bishops on white squares, the bishops on black squares, and see if either of those is greater than or equal to two. Yeah, something's not right about this test. Well, no, this test uses short circuit valuation. It's actually logically correct. It's just not scale of syntax. Uh, it's okay. Oh. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know how to help you there. So, I want to filter, are there fewer than two, well, I don't even need to do that check. If the hordes bishops are on both colors of squares, then there's no need to perform this particular comparison. But if all the horde bishops are on a single square color, that's when this needs to be done, I think. I could be wrong. So, line 94, if the horde has only a bishops remaining... Um, and the army bishop, wait, don't I already have a function called like bishops on opposite color or something like that? Uh, grip recursive opposite, uh, what am I looking for? Source, source home something. Main source? I don't remember. There is some function somewhere. Um, insufficient grep Leela. All right, so this is the thing I'm looking for. Insufficient mating material. There's a function here. Oh, bishops on different color. That's what I'm looking for. And this returns a Boolean. Returns true when the only non-king pieces that remain are bishops that cannot capture each other and cannot checkmate in atomic chess. Um, I don't see where it says anything about atomic chess here. That's weird. Perhaps the function is overridden somewhere. I don't remember. Although Scala doesn't allow overrides, does it? Um, Regardless, bishops on same color is equal to not king pieces map distinct size equal to one. Bishops are the same color. All right, so what I want is something like this. Um, hang on. First of all, we can check, are all the bishops on the same color? That's what I'm trying to check. So let me take that into my source file here. And say, um, if all the non-king pieces are bishops and they're all on the same color square, then that's, uh, oh, that's a lot simpler than the whole counting the ones that are not on the same square that are not this, not that. Um, but yeah, there's more to it than that. There's much more to it, uh, right?
Um, well, hang on. No, this covers a case where they're all bishops, but if there's some like pawns on the board, things get more complicated. Um, so, does this at least compile? Let's find out. Let's run SBT to first build the environment and then run the commands compile and test and whatever it was that we have here. The compile will verify does my latest change in fact compile. There's a command test dash only or test capital only or something, I don't remember. Um, I should look into that at some point. Let's see how that, uh, what the usage is. Because I just swapped out my Scala launcher, or my SBT launcher for the standard SBT launcher. Um. <laughs> oh, poor Zug. He's trying to watch the World Cup. Alright, so it compiles, then we run test. And this exercises all the tests that are written, that are coded under the SBT test directory or path. Um, <clears throat> so there's source and here's test slash scala. So we have a variety of tests for like anti-chess, atomic, automatic draws, berserks, bishop, how all the pieces move, how castling works, how the clock adjusts the clock. Um, there's tests for opening something or other, I don't know. There's all kinds of fun tests in here. I haven't looked at most of these. In fact, this one seems to be counted out. I think that's what the two slashes at the beginning of each line mean. Oh, I just opened the same file twice. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, this find Kalashnikov in this string of moves. That's the Kalashnikov variation of the Sicilian. Find Mugio in uh, this particular super long variation. So yeah, um, we're able to identify an opening based on a series of moves. Very cool. Uh, how's my testing going? All right, it's testing a lot of things. I think it executes all the tests, even if there's some error or exception somewhere in the middle of the testing. I think it pursues the testing to the... Oh, here we go. Skipped seven tests. Uh, tests unsuccessful. Okay, what failed? I can scroll up and find out which of these failed and why. Well, not why. I can figure out which of these failed. That's a lot of tests, right? Horde variant test. Uh, must recognize insufficient winning material when army capture is forced. Yeah, that failed. What else? Is that the only failure? It's not surprising that that one failed, because I just added it, because I just thought of it today. And it's like a corner case of a corner case that's like ridiculously un improbable. But, oh, I'm sorry, one test failed out of 667 tests. Whoops. Alright, so at least we know which one failed. Um, it's the one we just added. Which sucks for us, but that's okay. But also we have this to do for army pawns which promote on the wrong color square, assuming there's no pre-promotion checkmate. So to address that, um, I want to be able to find positions like this one where... Um, how do I say this? So this is going to promote to a light squared bishop. So unless there's a mate en route to the promotion square, um, then this is going to be a draw. And I'm trying to remember what's the circumstance under which there's a mate en route to promotion. Because it can happen. It sucks when it happens, but seems unlikely, doesn't it? Oh, this is going to promote here, so, but here, 
the bishop has only um, control of the light squares. So is there really a circumstance where um, this can trap the king? I don't think so. I could be mistaken. Like, what if I've got... Uh, what's it? No, because, like... Well, okay, so this might be enough. That even though the pawn's going to promote to the incorrect bishop, um, there could be a mate on the square prior to the promotion. Um, or, instead of there being a bishop here, even if these bishops are on the same color square, if this pawn can capture and then promote to a dark square bishop, then combined with the other dark square bishop, it can be a checkmate. Interesting. Oh no. Mac Pro keyboard was acting weird today. Last row of the laptop's keyboard was working with the default shift. Suddenly it started working right. Yeah. That's weird. Obviously you missed a word in there, but that's okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd wonder why it wasn't working with the default shift until this morning. That's quite strange. So, get status. Um, so I want to establish these positions, like this one. Um, uh, I'm sorry, like this one here. Where there is no checkmate. Um, because even if black manages to under-promote, black cannot under-promote to a piece which would trap his king. You have a suggestion, and Horde, last time you checked, it doesn't give the draw if white has the queen and black has the king. Yeah, yeah, and I'm working, I think that, um... Okay, so let me just ask what your question is, and unfortunately, we don't have an example game to reference. Examples are hard to come by. Because uh, you have to catch them when somebody reports them, but we're talking something like this, or something like that, or whatever. And your question is, is this a draw? And I'm, my question is, what are you asking? Um... Like, the queen cannot mate. The queen cannot mate here. The king can still win, but the queen cannot mate. Now, on the other hand, you get a position like this. Um, if it's stalemate, that's a, a draw. Yeah, so if we're just talking about this in general, this is not a draw because white can play queen f5 and black takes the queen. That's not a draw. The king can win. White checks, king wins. That's not hard. It's unlikely, but uh, the king can always win. Save for some really spectacular positions. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. That stumped me a few times, too. Um, yeah, for what it's worth, like, People will get all uppity about, oh, my opponent had only a bishop left, and look at me, I had like a queen and a rook and like five other pieces, and how come, how dare you give me uh, my opponent a win here? Um, the reality is that in many of these positions, it's possible to mate, but like, give white a pawn, and if white wins on time, nobody bats an eye. And it's like, come on, really? Got to be consistent about these rules here. Um, it doesn't have to be intuitive, but it has to be consistent. So, yeah. So this positions where it's super unlikely that a player is going to win uh, still count.
because the player could win. Yeah. Ugh. There's a history behind that particular, like, um, insufficient mating material stuff on leeches. I argued with an international master about it, and it took him quite a bit of effort to convince me uh, of my current position. What am I fixing? So, what got me started on trying to fix things? Well, no, what got me started was like, November, I noticed, just reviewing the code, that there were some pretty obvious things that were not correct. What brought this most recently to everybody's attention, like, eight months later or something, is that um, this position arose in Black Timed Out. Now, obviously Black's not going to lose this. Black has a very strong chance of winning this. But the rule is, is that this should be a win for the Horde because Black timed out. That's the rule. Um, but yeah, there are a number of other things that similarly are not correct if the Horde has very few pieces remaining. There's a number of rulings that are incorrect. The one that most jumped out at me, um, and I don't think there's getting any example of this because you'd have to be ridiculous to try to do this, and you totally deserve it if this happened to you, um, but nonetheless, I should still endeavor to fix it, um, is if we got this particular setup. Um, if white's time elapses, black should get a win here. As it's currently coded, I think this and a few other things don't count as a win for black. This would still be completely ridiculous and this is never going to happen in a real game. Yeah, white can technically win that game. It's not going to happen in, against most opponents and most people aren't going to object to the fact that like there was the wrong ruling on the game, but white can win that, so it should count. You're right. And that's one of the things I'm trying to fix. And the fact that, like, I deployed code over a year ago, and I didn't even touch some of this stuff with, like, the Horde variant. Um, but uh, I did in November notice that some things really needed to be cleaned up, but never quite got around to fixing those. I'm trying to fix them now. Because, well, I don't want more reports like this one. Because, yeah, white technically can win this. It's never going to happen, but white deserves the win here. Because uh, black timed out. I mean, the one thing that's kind of convenient for Leech Us on this one is that even though this didn't count as a win, um, like, white's only move is to push the pawn. Uh, I'm sorry, black makes any move here like this. And white has to push, and like black can take it. But, as the rules stand, this should be a win for white. Black can play basically anything here. Uh, white has an extremely low chance of winning, but white can still win, so white should get the win because black was the one who timed out. So this is the most egregious, like, example of a mistake that um, uh, kind of motivated me, especially with just now I have the opportunity to go fix it, I should fix it. And while I'm fixing that, um, you can check out, oh gosh, how do I drop this into the chat window? My chat window is not hooked up to this display here, so I don't have a way to drop it in. But, um, but if you like go to GitHub, you'll see me publishing all this stuff. Um, another one of these positions that I need to fix, something I just discovered today. This is even less probable, but uh, let's drop this in here. Up. I'm sorry, let's get to an analysis board uh, for this variant. Where to go? Three check anti chess atomic horde. So a position like this, 
or from White's point of view like that. Um, this should count as a draw for Black, even if Black times out. Um, working on automated planning. Automated planning is pretty hard. That's a pretty nice problem to solve. Um, yeah, well, truth be told, like, I've had very little formal training in Scala. I have had some, thanks to uh, Debo. He's able in a few spare minutes to give me some direction on how to go with this. Um, the Lee Chess code base is possibly uh, one of the most concise um, Scala code bases out there. So, uh, it's like a language unto itself. It's uh, art. It's uh, you really, you will struggle with this even if you know Scala, and I will struggle with this because I don't know Scala. <laughs> Although I'm very uh, slowly picking it up. Um, yeah, it's very cool. So, um, so the thing I fixed here was detection of. Well, hang on. I'm going to actually amend my previous commit there. Ward can win in many positions with only a single piece. Uh, we're going to push this. Uh, so all y'all can take a look at it. So here it is, published on GitHub. And there's my latest commit. Um, lots of lines of code changed. I've been editing and re-editing and re-re-editing this and um, yeah so we still have this big to-do here about if the army has a pawn. Um, there's still some cases where it deserves a draw despite how unlikely the circumstance is. Um, although I should put that to do in the test as opposed to putting that in the code itself. So this should be considered a draw. Likewise, this without the bishop on c1 should also be considered a draw. Um, but there are some pretty wonky positions where, well, no. Oh, goodness. I don't know. This is tough. <laughs> I'll have to think more about it. Hi! On standard chess, I like the way FIDE rules handles no increment games with the claim draw rule. Since that's impossible to enforce in internet chess, I feel the compromise Chesscom has, and Lee Chess used to have, where you get a draw if your opponent doesn't have main material. Uh, you got material enough to self-mate is better than the way Lee Chess currently handles it. Well, thanks for feedback. I wholeheartedly disagree, but thanks for the feedback. <laughs> uh, and the reason I disagree um, is because, well, uh, let's go open this board editor back up. So say I got this position here where I've got a king and a pawn. My opponent has a king, a queen, another queen, another rook, a couple of bishops, a knight, whatever. Um, if my opponent's time elapses, how would you categorize this? Would you say that this is a win for the side that has the pawn? Yes, that's a win. Okay, what if this is a knight that we have here? Then what? Yeah, I, this is what you're saying is that it's like super unlikely that this is a win, but I clearly are like white still has mating material. A mate can still be constructed. It's not very likely, but it's no less likely than the position immediately preceding it. 
or it's somewhat less likely, but still. You'd call this a draw. So, yeah. I mean, it's this is the sensibility in which we disagree, because you're saying, well, oh yeah, white can win this. White can win the other one, but he's not going to. And at this point, I have to say, well, hold on. You're playing with a clock. You agreed to play a game without an increment. It's egg on your face if um, you failed to convert this. Um, or failed to trade off and take off the material that's capable of doing the checkmate. Um, unfortunately, we just disagree um, here. And I... It took a lot of persuade or a lot of arguing among uh, Lee Chess devs to come to a consensus on this one. And the consensus we came upon was that um, that if a mate can be constructed, um, that losing on time counts as a loss, and um, that doesn't matter what the mating material is if the mate can be constructed. That all said, all of this problem's eliminated if you just play with an increment. Um, but, um, yeah, that's just part of... Uh, I mean, yeah, I understand other servers use, like, the USCF rules or other sets of rules. Um, and you're right that things like fortress detection um, can't really feasibly be done. Yeah. Now, for what it's worth, I think at one point FIDE had, and then later abolished, a rule for this... Or, I'm sorry, uh, USCF once had a rule for this. Like bishop versus knight. Or bishop versus bishop. Or that sort of thing. I think at one point... I forget which organization was. They had a special exemption just for this very particular endgame because of its likelihood of appearing on a chessboard and the difficulty of agreeing to a draw in this position. But again, um, if you're not playing with an increment, not playing with a delay, you're not playing with like any kind of thing that allows the players to negotiate, um, then it's going to come down to some sort of Armageddon-like thing where um, unless one player can capture the other player's piece, it's just not going to resolve into a draw. I hear your point, but I entirely disagree with it. But thanks for the feedback anyhow. <laughs> um, yeah, just play with an increment. Like, yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm trying to fix the Horde chess rule set. So, things like this in Horde chess um, should still count as a win for the army if the Horde times out after having under-promoted into a knight and a bishop. Or under-promoted into two bishops or whatever. Yeah, people enjoy winning on time, and then... When the tables turn and they be end up being the ones losing on time, they don't like it anymore. People are... Uh, there's a word for it. I don't know. remember what the word is. People are fickle about that sort of thing. Yeah, playing good chess is a good thing. And it's easier to get good chess if you play with an increment or play a longer time control. Although... Even on Lee Chess and the Quick Seek board, I've been asking for the longest time. Could we, like, take one of these numbers up here where it says, like, 10 plus 0? Could we just bump that to 10 plus 2, please? Where it says 5 plus 0, bump that to 5 plus 1. I think people would be happier on the site overall if those didn't have a zero increment. But, um, I got absolutely no traction and a lot of opposition with that suggestion, so that's not happening. But, um, and I don't mean to vent or anything, it's just people are fickle about these particular rule sets, and um, the rules are there to outline, 
I don't know. But yeah, it's the idea is that you don't magically draw the game by losing on time. Um, people, oh, I'm sorry. There's also the bike shed effect where people will argue about the tiniest little points. And there are some things that I have not found the resources to try to implement yet. Um, thankfully, they're so extremely uncommon that the players would practically have to be, um, I don't remember what the word is, but they'd have to be in cahoots to, like, organize it. Like, so you got this position, white plays, um, white plays this check. Black to move. Black loses on time. This could happen. Um, but, yeah, if you think about it, there's no legal series of moves to result in a checkmate here. So this should automatically be a draw. As soon as Queen E7 lands on the board, that should be a draw. Uh, likewise. Um, and this is going to get even wonkier, but um, let's see. So, say we got this position. Um, this should also be a draw. Wait. Um, no, because, I'm sorry, white's able to move. No, I have to add some more pieces onto the board to make this a draw. There we go. This should be a draw. But these, like, are so difficult to set up. Players practically have to be cooperating. And this has not come up on Leeches. It's not been an issue. But I'm doing my best to try to implement all this stuff. It's just very difficult. Uh, I see less people in the lobby. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. By FIDE rules, um, as soon as neither player can win, um, as long as as soon as uh, the only possible remaining ways to continue the game all end in a draw, the game is immediately declared a dead position. The players are not allowed to move anymore. The clock immediately stops, and the game is decided a draw. This is a draw by FIDE rules. Likewise, if I start adding, <clears throat> if I add even more queens to this position, Let's see. I mean, I could just keep going with this concept here, right? How many queens do we need? I don't know. This is still a draw. For the same reason. Like, well, no. I have to be careful that there's no inner position on the side of the board. Um, but, yeah. All of the remaining moves in this position are forced. Well, no, because no, there's the queen h5 to block the check. Uh, but this is a draw, if I put the queen back here. Um, yeah, this is a dead position, because neither player can checkmate. Um, all the remaining moves... Like, here, let me continue this against the machine. Doesn't really matter what the time control is, etc. This is from position. Sure, we'll play against AI level 8, because why not? Oh. Well, that's funny. Did it just refuse to play my game? How did it go about that? Like, that was a... Oh, I had the wrong player to move in that position. But anyway, you get the idea. That if that were black to move, that would be considered a dead position. Um, at least under FIDE rules. USCF doesn't have a rule for that sort of thing, but probably doesn't need one. USCF is much more about the arbiter taking a more passive role and allowing the players to try to um, resolve things without reaching out to the arbiter. Or rather, if there is a concern, then they stop the clock and then reach out to the arbiter. Whereas in FIDE, um, 
the Arbiter takes a much more active role. Uh, curiously, like there's the whole five-fold repetition and 75 move rule and all that. Which I think just makes the Arbiter's life more difficult. But in some circumstances could help the Arbiter, but I just wait for the day when a FIDE Arbiter fails to intervene and claim a five-fold repetition. And all the fans go completely ballistic on the Arbiter for having failed to do this. I mean, it can be understanding, but it doesn't seem fair to the Arbiter. Uh, UCF events are quite large. Entry fees are not as expensive, I guess, in general. So you have many more players and not as many tournament directors running around. So it's a lot more of a zoo. Um, and yeah... To get more Arbiter attention, you would need to have more tournament directors in the USCF, or just smaller events. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems hard. But also, chess doesn't seem difficult enough that, um, or at least at the amateur level, it doesn't seem... I don't know. It seems like players should be able to resolve their differences and abide by... Well, I say it's a simple enough game that, like, if there's not some big prize money up for grabs, players should be able to handle disputes without getting into fights with each other. I say that, and then I see things, and it's concerning, but... That has nothing to do with what I'm trying to fix at the moment. Um, yeah, I guess again, that's just the bike shed effect. Some people just get really attached to things. So, how do I add this condition to my tests? I need a position for that. Uh, let's go to the analysis board again. Uh, I'm sorry, let's go to the board editor, clear the board, and I need to set up a test position that could be considered drawn. Uh, is there such a thing? Um, so... Let's see, by my current rules, this would be considered a draw because um, black does not have enough pieces on dark squares. What if we add another pawn onto the board? Okay, this is what I was trying to think about, was this kind of position where... Um, well, no, black still doesn't have enough pieces on dark squares. Hmm. Interesting. So, are there classes of positions where um, the bishop can checkmate, but if black underpromotes all his pawns, then there's no longer a mate? Like, hmm. I'm trying to think about this. No, even if that pawn underpromotes, well, if it underpromotes to a bishop, then there's not a mate anymore. Otherwise, there is a mate. And by that, I mean, uh, let's talk about it this way. Black to move. Can black manage to lose this? Yes, by underpromoting to anything other than a bishop. Um, or by promoting to a queen. Um, but if black moves the h-pawn, for any of those promotions black could take, is it possible for black to lose this? Um, you would think so. You'd think there'd be a way. <sighs> so what am I looking for? 
Well, okay, so I guess what I'm concerned about is like this most extreme example. But now that's not so bad either, now is it? Um, so, huh. I'm trying to concern myself with positions where there are still pawns remaining on the board. Um, but the positions where the pieces win this are so few and far between. Um, black to move could move a bishop. So is there a position where the bishops cannot move? Yeah, no, I think I'm just concerned about some hypothetical here where black could get mated en route to promotion, but um, I don't know. This is weird. I guess the hypothetical that I warn about in my comment where technically there might be some position where the army has pawns remaining and the horde only has bishops remaining and the pawns promote on the wrong color square. Oh, wait, this concern isn't about defending the king. This concern is about... Um, um, well, no. Yeah, it is. That's a, exactly what it's about. Oh, yeah, yeah, the board setup utility allows you now to, like, indicate that I want a rook, and here we go. It took us, like, five iterations to get this right, but we got it right, and that's really cool. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure what I was referring to with this comment here, where I'm saying that the pawns promote on the wrong color square. Um, I was thinking about some hypothetical, and it's just not realistic. Like, there might be something in that category, but it would be so difficult to set up. And I don't even know how to test for it is the key point. Whereas, I do know the one test I have that I just introduced which is failing, which um, we saw up here. Uh, for this particular position, let's see, let's load the fen for that. Here, um, if the army, which is what I'm going to call the opposite of the horde, if they're forced to move, and they are, they are forced to capture a bishop. This position, which would otherwise be a win, is immediately a dead position. Um, no, I'm sorry, it's not, because the army could still win this. But the horde cannot win. Um, so, and that happens because all the legal moves in the position require capturing one of these bishops, and black only has two minor pieces remaining, none of which are a knight. So that's tricky. Oh, but I guess, like, we have the same dilemma, even if it's a queen there, don't we? Huh. So this isn't just a bishop thing. This is a, in general, if the army's only legal move is to capture, and if they capture gets rid of um, the only mating material. Yeah, that's kind of ugly. But we've got the same situation in normal chess at the moment, too, so maybe I don't need to be too concerned about it. Unless I can think of a way to fix it. Hmm. If you delete messages... If you delete messages, is it deleted on the other side, too? I do not know. I do not know. I assume not, but I don't know. Um, yeah, but this test I just added here um, is actually not something I have a way to test for. Or I'm not a, I don't have a way to um, 
performantly make sure it works. There's no solution to that problem. Uh, so we're just going to let that slip for the time being because I just don't have a way to address this. There are ways to look at this, but then that immediately raises the question of the more general problem that we were looking at, where there's a forced series of captures by both players. And this just goes uh, down the rabbit hole, and it's just not, there's no performant way to test for this other than using an engine. And I am separately working on an engine to try to work on self-mates and such, but that's a huge endeavor and it's not performant. Um, so the key point is, if you're in this position, just take the queen, or take the piece, or whatever it is there. Um, but yeah, this immediately raises the other difficult issue of just forced series of captures, which is really difficult to imagine in a horde chess game, but once I start going down this path, there's no stopping it. Um, yeah, I assume the point of deleting a message is just to tidy the inbox. Um, so, let's see, I just pushed to GitHub. Uh, let's see. Let's code comment is dated because here's my latest branch here we see uh, where's my test file I'm sorry let me run the test because that's going to take a while to run so my test is the horde variant test which we can view as in a whole here is that must not be insufficient with this material. Let me grab the URL. I can find the URL for this. Um, I can find this. And just think how messages work in general, right? If you're talking about a phone, or you're talking about like actual physical mail, or email, or whatever, messages don't allow you to delete things. <laughs> I say that, and then I think about, well, if you're using a Microsoft Exchange server, you could actually do some things that don't abide by the convention of messages in general. But um, but yeah, here's my set of tests, just for Horde Chess, which greatly improve, but do not perfectly fix um, the rule set. They do fix some pretty obvious defects with the current rule set, um, and certainly more tests could be added to this particular set of tests, but, oh, damn it, did I not push my change? The thing about when a capture is forced is still there. Or is it not? I'm looking at a dated version of that here. Um, tests passed total 666 passed 659 skipped 7 um, yeah 666 tests that's quite good right there's nothing that could go wrong with this the devil's in the details they say okay so uh, but yeah no we see, like, I added all these tests here, cleaned up some of the punctuation, because we don't need it. Um, must not be insufficient material with only a pawn remaining, because uh, the white pieces could still win in this particular position. Um, but there are some positions where a pawn is not enough. Uh, I need to get rid of this to do comment because I'm not sure what I'm referring to there. So let me get rid of the uh, to do comment. Either way, this is a huge boost uh, step forward. Um, yeah, 
git add source git commit amend git push f origin word fortress and the only reason I'm using force push as opposed to doing one commit after another after another is that um, in that way my very scattered thoughts would not be possible to follow whereas if I put them all into one commit at least um, the purpose of this commit is pretty clear uh, that in many pieces where the horde has only a single piece remaining it could still win and should get credit um, there was one little side effect here somewhere or in a previous commit that um, the king can always win even if the horde under promotes to that nonsense that we were looking at earlier um, all right, so I'm going to quickly check. Are there any chess-related things I have to check on here? Otherwise, we might be wrapping this up. Um, so the Lee Chess Bot API. Um, this is actually interesting. So the Lee Chess Bot API was released recently. Uh, it's a lot to let specially dedicated bot accounts play via a new API, but only after they had been labeled as a bot account. And so somebody developed a open source Python library for easily consuming the API. I eagerly contributed to make sure that my engine is able to run all the variants using this particular Python library called leechess-bot. Um, Thibaut also contributed a bit and helps maintain the repository from time to time when he's not busy with other things. Um, he's been very, very helpful and supportive and excellent on this particular project. Um, and I've done my best to try to just comment and make sure our discussions on the issues of this repository stay focused because some people will raise the same issue in all of the pull requests and all of the issues they'll repeat the same thing over and over because they're quite enthusiastic about their point and it makes it difficult to follow what they're saying at times or sometimes people will opine about things and just have questions and I'll be glad to inform them to the best of my knowledge even though I don't know everything um, so we're having this discussion about the chess engine communication protocol CECP which uh, a number of engines, particularly older ones, use because that allows the engine greater control over things like draw offers and resignation and such. Um, and we're having a discussion about um, uh, well, what was the initial point of this? Gate timeout error messages. I'm seeing a number of errors from this bot. Um, and yeah, I've seen these from time to time too. I mean everybody sees a few errors from time to time when packets get dropped or whatever. And packet drops are apparently related to another twist about losing on time and attempting to like offer or claim or whatever a draw. And I ask, well isn't that just a problem for export engines? I haven't had any problems with this particular thing you're describing because I follow the UCI Universal Chess interface specification and I specify that I need to know how much time each player has on the clock and I'm going to allocate one second per move so my engine never runs out of time. Uh, my engine has good time management skills. And uh, we're hearing, well, uh, both the export and the UCI specify how much time the engine has left on the clock. Export actually has many ways to deliver the time to the engine that's correct tell the engine author should better use their time control and never lose on time is to displace response well you are asking uh, I'm not going to berate him there's n no point in berating him what is the EFF uh, electronic frontier foundation do I have an alias or a command for this I think I do EFF is it still there yeah it's an excellent organization for defending civil liberties um, in the digital world and educating people about the policies of our day. They're a 
excellent, wonderful pro net neutrality force in the world. Um, and you will hear me constantly uh, support them. So that's good. You're trying to decide if you're going to focus more on your time on Horde or Anti-Chess, and you've decided on Horde. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Yeah, I've been... Uh, I trained my bot to um, be as aggressive as possible at Anti-Chess, because I'd like to see people consider it solved and done with. Even though humans can still have many an interesting game with it, Cheat detection for anti-chess is an extremely hard problem, and I don't know how it's done. And it's going to be a bigger and bigger problem, and it's never going to go away, because the variant is solved, and there's no way you can prove that nobody memorized the solution, or at least enough of the solution to beat other players. It's just... It's a disaster in terms of, like, nobody's going to be able to moderate that eventually it's just going to be a lost cause for a decade or two we might be able to hold up but eventually it will become impossible to figure out who's cheating at anti-chess um that's my opinion i'm not involved in any of the cheat whatever but i just um uh, as an ai developer an ai enthusiast um recognize that ais are going to get more complex and detection of um, AIs for solved variants of chess is going to be very difficult. And nobody's going to be interested in it. Um, okay, but yeah, to tell the engine author that they should better manage their time is to displace responsibilities. There's a saying if you give a mouse a cookie, I'll just leave it there. Of course, he understands. Yeah, engine authors cannot imagine all this. Um, yeah, Xadreco is uh, much more like a human. It does lose on time, it resigns, it offers draws, etc. So if an engine loses on time, the communication bot should command it to stop. I don't disagree, but who's going to fix that? We went from, initially this was reported as gate timeout error messages. I'm seeing a number of errors from Leech's bot following the same pattern, all of them lead to an abort or game over or loss on time. Does anybody else see that as their actual connectivity problem? And I say, yeah, I see it, sure. Um, but generally only if an opponent aborts on move zero. Um, if anybody has a good idea how to fix this, um, eventually Careless will get around to fixing it. But... Oh my god, this is going to take forever to fix. Like, fix it both for UCI and for the Chess Engine Communication Protocol, CECP. Uh, it's going to require enhancements to the Python Chess Library, probably. It's going to be a big, hairy, ugly mess, and I can't imagine this uh, developer fixing it in a timely manner. Like he says, he'll get around to fixing it eventually, but... Um, Let's see, what's the other thing? Export versus UCI discussion. Um, since many old engines do support this protocol, it seems like a useful thing to ask for is support for the protocol. I actually support him on, yeah, let's implement the protocol. It's just a very difficult thing to do. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, do I think anti 960 or 960? Yes, I think anti chess 960 would help um let's see is there anything else here that i need to check out um there's a number of interesting ai projects i follow from time to time but so i submitted a pull request to the lee chess bot um it's basically a one-liner should stop 90% of the error messages that are happening um, where it says they had tried to contact the server 12 times or 10 times or 15 times. Um, now I'm saying if the server returns an error code of 400, that means the client messed up. Now whether or not that's accurate could be argued, 
But if the server is telling the client that the client messed up, the client should say, okay, you're right. And you could log something and say, you know, maybe I don't think I messed up. Um, but yeah, in a circumstance where the opponent aborts on move zero, and then we try to send a move, and then we try to resend it and 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 resend it, and resend it, and resend it over and over, we shouldn't be doing that. We should give up. First time we get an HTTP 400 or 401 or 402 or 40 whatever. Um, so that's the point of this. Um, and I think people are in agreement that this is something that should be done. We did have some conversation about it. Um, and I've not been able to get any agreement on this. Um, so my last message was, I sent a message four days ago, I sent a message three days ago. I should send another message. Um, just, I really want this merged because this is going to reduce traffic on the Leechess servers and possibly deal with some of the issues they're having on their production server. Um, as this should reduce 90% of the requests which uh, 90% of the traffic uh, to the Leeches server in cases where the opponent has aborted or resigned out of turn. Yeah. So that should help everybody. How many bots are registered on Leeches? That's a good question. Let's try to take an estimate at that because I don't know. Um, I do know that I'm actually following my bot now, go to Lesher bot, and go to Lesher bot does participate in the forum of the Lee Chess bots team. So this is my easiest way to get to the Lee Chess bots team is through um, the account that I'm following here. And so if I click on Lee Chess bots, which I did click on it, okay, there it is. So, best players are these players, recent members. This is not exclusive for uh, bots. Um, I have no idea how many members there are in this team. Oh, I'm sorry, 468 members. So if we estimate that half of those are actually bots, that would put the bot count at 234. Yeah, I don't know how many bots there are exactly, but it's something like that. Um, if you want to catch up on the latest bot action, here it is, Capture Bot. These bots are endearing. The ones that, like, they do try, but they try interesting strategies. Always makes a capture when possible. Plays all variants, raptor faster, human or bot. This is cool. Now, granted, it might be pretty good at anti-chess, um, but that's still pretty funny. Uh, you know, Fishy Vishy was trying to analyze some Atomic 960 positions to make it more balanced. I've not heard anything about it. Um, yeah. People have been supporting the idea of a bot tournament lately. I'm not, like, mm, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, I did ask quite persistently, um, and not that my persistence is worth anything, right? Um, so I think my issue was like issue 1494, was that it? No, this is the other thing I asked for. I was very persistent on this one, um, but no, like 
the thing that once I wanted was um, to have engine accounts, uh, which were treated as first-class accounts, and given all the same rights and permissions and everything as everybody else, as long as they were clearly labeled as bots. Um, and like the basic gist I'm getting from the Leechus uh, staff is that while that could be a very interesting academic endeavor, Leechus is very interested in having players play against players. And that's where Leechus likes to devote its resources. Now, bots can be opponents of human players. Certainly, I mean, bots can also directly challenge other bots. But Lee Chess is interested in making chess fun for human players. Um, and the extent to which we have to go make um, Lee Chess, I don't know, capable of handling more bot versus bot stuff um, detracts from like the server resources and the development resources and such that could be used on making it better for human versus human games. Um, and while the reason this is seen as a negative is because um, nobody's watching these bot versus bot games. Now it is possible if you have two bots on your computer, you don't need to use the bot API, you could use the broadcast API to relay an event that you run on your computer and publish the games as they're happening. This was actually done for the Crazy House uh, Engine World Championship back in December. You could publish your games here live. You don't need to use the bot API to play two engines against each other on your machine. Where this is kind of lacking, like you point out, is that you can't just like have, there's no easy way to have a bot scheduled to play against another bot. Um, and yeah, while bot tournaments in some cases are popular, um, yeah, we'll, we'll say, yeah, like humans playing against humans is what adds the most value to the site. Uh, bots playing bots does actually consume resources on the site, particularly if they're moving quickly, but also if they have many games going at once or whatever, there's resources that, um, uh, could be better purposed. Uh, so your question is, do any of the engines suck? You can only beat Stockfish at level 2. I'm going to take a chance and play against Capture Bot here, and we'll find out if it's any good. Alright, Capture Bot, let's do this. Um, three minutes, two second increment, casual game, because I don't need the rating points. I've got enough rating points already. Alright, so must capture if it can. Okay, brilliant move there. All right, I think I have an advantage. Could be mistaken. Oh, it's got to capture again. I could have taken the bishop. I'm getting really all excited about this capturing thing. All right, so it's got to capture if it can, so we'll just give away a pawn. Um, okay, yeah, take my rook. Check. I'll take your other rook. So... I think it's safe to conclude that Capture Bot um, is perhaps an opponent that you'd be capable of defeating. Oh no! Wait. What happened here? Capture Bot, why? No, Capture Bot! <laughs> oh, what did it try to do? Oh no, I didn't mean to embarrass the author. Okay, let's read um, your comments. If Mango Town ever has some money, we've been talking about some idea of having a multi-variant tournament, having a tournament for each variant, and the players with the highest combined points would win the prizes. You might also want to talk with Fishy Vishy, um, who's quite the variant enthusiast. Um... 
I know at times he was organizing like his league of tournaments, and I have no idea like what his prize structure was like. Um, capture bot, no. <laughs> oh no, I seem to have um, tricked capture bot somehow. Okay, it moved. Never mind. So that's good. I don't know why it took so long thinking about that move. That was not a very difficult move. Alright, so... And then Queen G4 is mate, right? Yeah. Alright, so let's look at the move time graph. Um, there was one particular spike where it took 75.8 seconds to come up with a move. But in general, it moved pretty quickly. I wonder how it achieved that. Um, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so Capture Bot you could probably take on. Um, but yeah, you could find out, like, if you just watch the bot TV, um, over time you can uh, get a sense of what bots are there to play against. Um, I do think some sort of index of who all the bots are could be kind of fun. Although I guess the Lee Chess Bots team has a forum, um, and that forum could also serve as an index of bots that want to be discovered. I don't know. Uh, it's always fun to watch these bot things. I, would, I try to leave these going in the background. Quite often my own bot does show up in this list or on this TV. Um, but my main point of making my bot was, well, twofold. One, I want to experiment with things. And two, I want to make sure that the Lee Chess Bot API itself is stable for all the variants. So, uh, how's my bot doing? Funny you should ask, so let's go look at it. Um, you see all of these lines here, right? It's basically hovering between 2,000 and 2,500 for all the variants. Um, those are some very flat lines. It is basically stabilized to the point where, like, either people, either the opponents challenging it, um, have changed such that it's own, mostly opponents that can put up a fight or mostly opponents that can't, I can't tell or um, I mean I've I haven't changed anything about the way it accepts opponents but somehow it's flatlined so that means like it's not in this phase where it's yeah I don't know I don't know how it managed to flatline like that, because you see there was a lot of skip in this graph at first. This could speak to some like bug in the rating system or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's funny here, we had a bullet rating of 2292, and now we're 2079, so somebody got a good 200 points off of us there. Um, so kudos to whoever did that. I guess it just doesn't get very many rated games these days. Maybe that's what's going on. Is that occasionally somebody will play a rated game. Probably the player who does that is rated 800 and it doesn't affect either player's rating anyway. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Um, in the meantime, I've still been... So this runs the official Stockfish build. Like, this is developed from my source code, but I'm not the one doing the releases because uh, the quality control is much too hard for me to manage. So the actual releases are done courtesy of Nicholas, who manages these. So every time he does a release, I uh, deploy that release onto my instance. Um, and I just, like, I'm a developer of the multivariant stockfish AI, so I'd much rather not be the one advising when to release it. That's just much too much for me to worry about, that I'm always trying to develop and add new features, but then try to make sure it's stable 
Those are two contrary goals. I have a very hard time managing both of those simultaneously with this project, which is deployed everywhere. So I'm always like, if I'm the one who has to make sure that it releases, that kind of kills my spirit for developing it. So yeah, Niklas is doing an excellent job um, managing the releases. That way I'm free to just work on the development and Fabian and I can make sure that the tests uh, do what they're supposed to do with testing it. So you've probably seen this screen a number of times. Sorry for the blinding white light. I gotta figure out how to style this at some point, but the latest thing I developed was this tiny little change, uh, which affected multiple variants, but ultimately I only kept this block of it. Uh, we had some extra code that I had to check in at some point because uh, otherwise the engine was just not handling things gracefully at all. Uh, so I was able to get rid of a comparison that was unnecessary. Um, and I'm always merging things from upstream. So right now my machine's actually not handling these requests. I should look into what's going on there. Um, fish test. So the fish test worker is running, but I think it's just not fast enough. Um, I'm sorry, no, there was one other thing here. Um, let's see. So I want to switch to fish test, and in so doing, um, let's read the end of this journal. Yeah, we still have this... Wait, what? Uh, no, I think we still have this compile error, right? Yeah, Fabian pointed out my engine wasn't going fast enough. And I countered with, well, it looks like I'm not actually compiling this special version of um, this fairy stockfish at all. Um, there's actually a compile error I'm encountering because I don't have square root as part of my standard library. Um, this might work on MSVC or something, but it's just not working on my machine. Um, but, you know, this fairy stockfish stuff probably does work on... Uh, what's it? Where'd it go? Oh, this is the thing he's trying to test. Is his own shot trage fairy stockfish fork um, which is here's the repository does it not deploy to app fair um, I wonder so like this should deploy to Travis and to app fair right oh well that would explain something yeah this is the official stockfish not his version um, issues, ideas, new issue, let's see, Travis, CI, and app, Veor. Um, perhaps it would be useful to test, uh, uh, to deploy uh, fairy stockfish on Travis CI and on App Veor. Um, from perspective of, you could see the same errors I'm seeing. It's not just my PC. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> Travis. Yeah, I get you're getting at there. Um, curiously, or not so curiously, and I don't know the answer to this, um, Travis CI is moving to a more commercial model where uh, they're advertising that, yeah, they... Wait. Testing your open source projects will always be free. Oh. Oh. I was very concerned that this might not be the case anymore. I was very concerned about that. Well, that's the answer then. Thank you, Travis. 
you're amazing, I love you, just, oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, as long as Travis CI continues to be a thing, testing open source projects will be free, so that's good. They're more heavily pushing toward you using their newer API and stuff, but um, I, sp ah, I misspelled app fair. All right, we're going to find it. Fair, oops. We're going to go find, sorry about that. Fairy stockfish. Good gravy. Yep, yep, yep. How did I misspell that? Travis C.I. and App Fair. Oh. Okay, well, I think we know what we meant. Let's try this again. A P V V E Y O R. Okay, I think I got it right this time. I think the message itself was clear enough, but you're right, I did typo it. Um, so, yeah. I'm hoping that this gets reviewed, because I've asked this guy three times in a row for comments. Um, after he says, you might be right, I'm getting over defensive, etc., etc. Um... My point is, like, I don't really care if you're getting defensive or not. I need to know how we're going to resolve that. Uh, and whether I should continue contributing code to that project in the future. Um, so that said, I think... Oh, wait. Um, we missed my initial point, which is that I was fixing up Scala chess rules. Um, so... I think I've got some confidence in this Horde Fortress thing. Um, <laughs> Horde Fortress is probably not the best name for this branch. Um, update draw insufficient material tests and I uh, update horde insufficient material and fortress logic uh, detection um, validation I don't know tests checks something uh, Conditions, detection, and fortress detection. Yeah, I think that's um, all right. So we'll say this does not handle all corner cases, but should handle. Um, this does not handle all corner cases but should handle 99.9999% of um, positions encountered in real games. Um, That's probably too many nines. Let's, let's see. Something like that. Um, so hopefully this will get some discussion moving as to what it is that we should be doing for this sort of thing. Probably this pull request will be rejected, which is kind of funny because there's a pretty glaring defect with um, whatever. I could separate that out. Um, 
I was trying to make the code better while I was at it. So, um, I think that's probably it for the variant uh, rule validation stuff. Um, I could show you like how it is that I managed to deploy the latest stockfish onto my bot. Because believe it or not, I made a fork of Leech's bot. Um, and my fork uh, has everything I worked on, like this branch here, download GitHub release. Um, so this always downloads the latest multivariant stockfish from that GitHub repository we were just looking at using the same code that uh, is used by Fishnet. Fishnet being the uh, when you're playing against an AI here or when you request a game analysis, Fishnet is what's servicing Stockfish over a distributed network. So that's what that's about. So I'm downloading uh, the same release of multivariant Stockfish as everybody else there. Um, let's see. So this branch is 14 behind. Uh, the master branch there. So let's just take a look at where I'm at with regard to um, actual development here. Uh, Leeches. Wait. Do I not? Okay, there it is. Leeches dash bot. Get status. Get, uh, get remote. What did I name everything here? Get push origin. I'm sorry, push my branch, my repo, master branch, and we'll push that, and that's pushed. And we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm even with the master branch, so I've got all the latest changes here. Furthermore, my branches to get the latest stockfish are up to speed as well as my branch which gets the latest stockfish and then sets it um, with a move overhead for anti-chess of 100 milliseconds instead of the standard 1000. This forces it to think much more when it's playing anti-chess than when it's playing anything else. So it's much more competitive at anti-chess because um, I want it to win every anti-chess game or at least make it no fun to play against there. Um, with the other variants, I'd much rather have it just be a fun little challenge, but uh, for anti-chess in particular, I wanted to just try to win all the time. Um, and I'm, I've got further things developed to that ex uh, to that end, but I've not yet deployed them. Uh, is S-Chess still the most likely next variant? I think so. I can't say for sure, but I think so. For a while, I was trying to push Dark Chess, um, and I just eventually realized like I don't have the time energy and such to uh, implement and test and uh, support and all that that particular variant. Dark chess is amazing but it's over my head. So S chess is the most likely candidate but it's quite similar in nature to Crazy House. Um, I get that it's different. I've played it. It's fun. But the the fact that you have to gate in your pieces, which is what introduces the novelty into the variant, makes it much more like Chess 960 in that way. Um, the fact that you have to gate in the pieces is going to make uh, the front end code a lot more challenging. And the fact that we have to have new art assets for all of um, the sets of pieces is also a challenge. The yeah, I don't... So, like, you have all your piece sets. All the 2D and 3D sets would need to have new pieces commissioned for that variant. Or you'd need to have a way of defining you must use a given piece set or something for 2D and 3D. Uh, it's got to work both on the web as well as on the mobile devices. Um, and then, once all that's done, we realize that Stockfish can't analyze S-Chess games. Um, yeah. 
So I think the front end, the fact that you have to gate in the pieces, and how would you describe a position as what squares can and cannot be gated in on. Like if I wanted to go to the board editor and say, yes, I'm setting up this position, but oh, by the way, the bishop's already moved, but the rook is not already moved. And I'm like setting up my own custom S chess position. Or I'm playing from position or something, or uh, rather I'm going to go over to the analysis board now and pick a variant. I'm going to pick S chess here. And I need to define which pieces in S chess have already moved. There's just a lot of things that have to be considered. And then ultimately when it's done, then there's still no AI analysis for it. There is, uh, Fabian has worked on, I believe, an S chess fairy stockfish, the very code base we were just looking at, but it does not perform at the same level that this stockfish performs at. And I've been working very hard on trying to improve performance of this particular stockfish for multivariant and it's just very difficult. Um, I do, I'm always keeping up to date with what the latest rust fish has to offer. Um, rather what the latest, latest rust language has to offer and what the rust fish stockfish encoded or transcoded into rust um, transpiled into Rust? I don't remember. But the uh, Ronald Deman um, goes by the handle of Zizigi has worked on a stockfish port in Rust called Rustfish that helped him test out his endgame table bases and maybe improve the table base probing code and such. Um, and at some point, I do want to try to code at least one of my variants in Rust and see what advantages Rust has to offer over C++ and build some experience with that and see maybe the code base is easier to maintain in Rust. But also, it seems like Rust doesn't perform at the same level as C++ in the first place, but I don't know. Not sure what to say. Um... So, let's see. Lots of work to do. Is there a yes or fan club on Leech Us? Uh, someone asked for coders to help. Yeah, I don't know. And the other thing is, like, Leech Us does things kind of at its own pace. So, um,. One of the cooler features that Leech has developed that's just not utilized to the greatest possible extent, but could be utilized more, um, is this insights feature, um, which describes the way you play. And, um, yeah, it's like, how quickly do I move each type of piece? Maybe not the most useful thing. How quickly do I move by opening? I'll tell you, based on which opening you select, how quickly you're moving in general. How uh, quickly do I move based on move time? No. <laughs> or based on game phase? Where do I spend my time? There's a lot of insights that can be derived from this. Um, uh, some of the developer got very excited in developing this. And unfortunately, it's not used as much. Uh, well, it is still used. A lot of people do use it. I'd like to see it used to a greater extent, but um, I'm also curious how a coach could make use of this information to point a player um, to indicate what they should be focusing on next. I don't know that that really could be done with this, um, but some rough approximations could maybe maybe be made. I don't know. Um, yeah, this is a really awesome feature. Um, increasingly, other sites are starting to develop kind of similar things, but not really. Um, so yeah, Leechus really focuses on scalability of features. Um, and while the variants are very exciting, and people get very excited about them, like, you'll see Yasser on here quite often, just playing Crazy House. He's pretty amazing like that. Um, 
a lot of people do enjoy their variants. Um, and a lot of people will play against my bot for some reason. Um, I mean, I guess it's good fun, because, like, this is something... Uh, <laughs> okay, and then you have bots playing against my bot. Sure. I don't go out there and, like, challenge any of the bots or anything. They do come to me. Um, there's some interesting contests to be had here. Um, but no, I kind of really like what people are doing with bots and just making their own homegrown bots that um, aren't aiming to win every game at all costs, that are just more, let's just put some lines of code together and see, like, can I do something that entertains a human? And I think the next big discovery in chess is going to be how to train humans to think um, more like top-level humans. And insights might help with that. Um, so I interrupted my original comment, which was that Leechus develops features at its own um, pace with a focus on scalability. Um, and I'm trying to think you know, how that relates to your point of like, well, when's the next variant coming out? I guess we don't really know, because we do things at our own pace. Um, I have to admit, I'm amused how this bot is, like, trying to win, but also not trying to put very many pieces on the board or something. I don't know. There's some pretty stark difference between these bots. Um, but yeah, I don't know when the next variant's going to come out. Um, it's going to be exciting whenever it lands. Um, if it If we do develop more variants, we don't know that either. Um, one of the variants I actually, in principle, and even though I don't play it all the time, I really think that's an excellent variant, is Racing Kings. And what makes it excellent is that it's like nothing like chess. It's very different. That all the pieces move in the same way. In my mind, that makes it an excellent variant. Um, that we got something that's very different from our beloved familiar game um, in, uh, kind of in the same way that anti-chess is very exciting until it got solved and I think Racing Kings is very exciting it's also extremely difficult um, it has one heck of a learning curve but I think it's a very exciting thing and I wish more people felt the same way about it um, cause like I was kind of championed that cause that hey we developed all the stuff we needed to do to actually release it let's not sit idly by and debate whether or not to release it let's actually just do a release um, and we did release it um, and I think it's been an excellent thing because it's a great variant but it's also extremely difficult and people are frustrated by that and I don't know how to help people with that um, yeah you're a fan of that more than the standard setup Racing Kings yeah yeah I saw what you were doing there it was it kind of resembles a board game by the name I think of Hasami Shogi um, which doesn't have all the same pieces, but it has a similar concept of racing to the opponent's side of the board. I think, um, I don't know, I'm still thinking that uh, Racing Kings itself is pretty exciting, despite it being extraordinarily difficult, at least for humans. Um, what most impresses me about Racing Kings is that it's just very difficult. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not solved that um, even for engines it's a very difficult problem and it just surprises me that like how can a variant that's um, I don't know so tactical not immediately reduce to a solution but instead challenges persist um, indefinitely I don't understand also what I don't understand is what's going on in this game 
where a moment ago black had tons and tons of pieces in hand and this has gone full circle and that like now almost all the pieces are on the board but uh, stockfish is still attacking like whatever happened here black's king was in graver danger than white's and white's trying to blast open the king's side and that's this is one heck of a struggle we got some very strong engines playing here yeah i think people dislike it because it's so different but in my mind like the whole point of a variant is it's not supposed to be the same as playing chess like king of the hill was one thing and honestly like it surprises me that that also doesn't reduce to a win and like it's so or a draw but um also that it is fairly complicated and can provide some very fun and interesting games um i don't think it's like if i had to pick a variant just to pick one and remove it probably king of the hill just because like well, it's very similar to chess, except for this one little thing at the end of the game. Um, but I don't have to pick one. They're all great variants. Yeah, it's very similar to chess. You'd think it'd be more popular. But then if you look at the actual statistics of who plays games on the server, it's the server's not that popular in terms of variants anyway. And I think there's this kind of vicious cycle out there where nobody plays variants. So there aren't very many variant tournaments. You can't seek variants in the lobby very easily. It's difficult to find opponents. And so there aren't very many games with variants. And it's like, there's kind of this cycle here where because it's not popular, we don't do it and therefore it's not popular. And how do you get beyond that? I don't know. Um... People have ideas and they try them out, but I think chess is much more popular to begin with. Um, no, I've not actually given up on Cook, Serve, Delicious. Um, so I actually started back at the beginning. I was going to play a full playthrough. I'm still working on that. I want to manually reach my way up to the top, trying a different tech track this time. And trying different recipes than I did the first time. I'm still waiting for Serpent AI to mature to the point where it's much more practical to use. It is rapidly accelerating, but it's still quite difficult um, for games which don't have immediate feedback on everything. Serpent AI is excellent at games which have immediate feedback on other games like Cook Serve Delicious where you have to like I'm gonna start cooking something and then I'm going or I'm gonna prepare the ingredients and make sure I combine the correct ingredients and then I'm gonna start cooking something and cook it for some period of time maybe even have it cook off on the side and then I'm gonna step over to the side and start doing something else and then I'm gonna come back before it burns and make sure I serve it to the customer Oh, and by the way, I'm going to make sure in the first place to accept the customer and not forget to accept them. It, there's a lot of pieces to that. And um, my bot, or rather doing a machine learning based bot in the same style as Alpha Zero, is uh, it's just computationally expensive and I don't have the computer for it. And if Serpent AI matures, maybe I will have the computer for it without having to upgrade all my hardware. Um, but for now, I'm probably going to focus, I don't know, more on other sorts of games with the AI learning stuff. Um, but I also have a number of games that I manually intend to complete, so those are fun too. Um, do you ask in a forum for people to make a Lee Chess type site? with Shogi or Shanky. Um, so I think I said on stream last time that I made the Relay Chess site. And if I could do that for Relay Chess, granted I wasn't the one who coded it, but point stands that if somebody really wants a variant, 
um, they could make their own site, use the Leechess logins, and they could manage their own rating system and gameplay and so forth. And so that we did that for Relay Chess that also existed at one time for Bug House. And the Bug House thing just, it's not there anymore, as best as I can tell. It never gained the popularity just uh, on its own isolated site. What's going on here? How come neither player has won this? I know my bot's trying to win. I don't know what this general yummy whatever is trying to do. But like, this is seeming like a very intense game. I'm stumped as to like, who's got the better side of this battle. The restaurant worked better than little square trying to jump spikes. Oh, you're referring to my initial bot that I downloaded from GitHub and greatly enhanced, giving it all kinds of new recipes, and then downloaded a different bot that also played the game, but it was all manually scripted. You're right that those bots, once manually instrumented, um, did quite well at the variant, or did quite well at the games they were playing. Sorry, I'm exhausted. Um, they did quite well at playing those, but um, that was all manual coding. It, there really wasn't anything being learned there. That was just me seeing, can I make a bot that um, actually plays the game? I forget what my purpose of doing that was. Um, other than some thought that maybe at some point I'd try to figure out how to add AI to that, but that seems impractical. Well, this is entertaining, so it sacks the queen. I think Godel's about to lose this. Because it's got only a rook remaining. This is quite the prolonged struggle, but um, it looks like we're seeing the beginning of the end here, because... Um, Go to Lesher Bot cannot even give a check in this position. And seems like it's about to lose its rook. Yeah, this is looking over. I am curious just what happened this game. This is pretty intense. Probably it's Stockfish playing against Stockfish, if I had to guess. Going for mate, not even taking the rook. That's cold blooded. Alright, so now knight f2. Mate in two. Even I could spot this. There it is. Checkmate, Black's victorious. Uh, so let's analyze this game, because that's... This is a quite an incredible struggle between two titans. I think they're both running the same engine. I look forward to whenever there's the next crazy house... Um, CCVA, Computer Crazy House Variant Association um, World Championship. I look forward to that. I liked seeing... In fact, I still at some point have to go back and run some um, Blitz games between AIs. I wanted to do my own little Blitz Crazy House or Atomic or something. Run my own little championship. I think that could be fun. And the Leech S broadcasts give me the ability to do so. Um, but at this point, I'm ranting. Uh, we've talked about Leech S Bot. We've talked about all these repositories I'm contributing to. I'd still like to see some decision on what happens with the pull request I did. Not to do uh, to my name, Leech S Bot, but to this. Um, so it'll be interesting to see that. I'm following the issues as they're discussed here. Um, yeah, I don't know that I have much else to share at this point. I did submit my Scala Chess patch. I don't think it's going to be accepted on its first um, pass-through, because there's a lot that changed here. But this does address some of the most, in my mind, but not in everybody's mind, the most egregious flaws of 
what was already out there. And this is just a continuation of what I think we coded on stream. I could be incorrect about that, but I think I did stream most of this back some half a year, a year or something ago. Um, and it turns out the way I coded was just fine, I think. I was thinking there were exceptions to the rule, but today I realize those exceptions have their own exceptions, and it's just much too complicated to try to address all those. So just try to address the things that are going to happen in real games. Uh, I think this should suffice for that purpose. Uh, so King Threatened is still defined, but we defined Peace Threatened because we needed it somewhere else. I forget where I needed it, but it was useful. Um, so yeah, I think this is good progress. Uh, sorry for beating around the bush and such there. It's been a while. We're getting back in the hang of things. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Here's the eval graph. Yeah, as I feared, this is kind of like off the charts in both directions. Um, I mean, that means it's one heck of a really well-fought battle, but at the same time, that means um, my bot made 10 mistakes. Which, maybe it's just not that good at this time control. I don't know. I'll think more about it. But that's pretty cool. That um, just the bots are playing against each other sometimes. Not all the time, but it's good to have a good sparring partner once in a while. I remember when Sirwan and uh, Jan Lee and such were all challenging this bot. Um, that being not just my bot that's running up in a cloud on some... Um, but no, somebody was actually hosting uh, Stockfish Multivariant on their PC. And this is a very exciting time, and... Um, uh, yeah. We had Jan Lee, who was very kind to play against it as it was being developed, and they gave me all kinds of ideas. Eventually, uh, Fabian and I struck upon the, the really bright idea of augmenting the fish test uh, testing server, and we've been relying heavily on this ever since. And so that's been a good thing for everybody. Um, this has been our way of benchmarking what works and what doesn't. So anyway, um, sorry for the digressions going all over the place here. Slowly getting to the back, getting back into the hang of streaming. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, Fortune, pipe to cow, say. What's our word of wisdom before we sign off? Your mode of life will be changed for the better because of some good news soon. Okay, I can accept that. All right, so thanks for watching. It's been fun. We'll see you uh, next time with some games or something. All right, have a good day.